Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here. Welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Incredibly excited today because I have a brand new, all new Hornby Loco to show you today. And the best part about it is it's not a pen. So today's model literally arrived about five minutes ago. The postman has only just brought it. And it is this, the brand new Hornby Princess Royal class. For Hornby, the Princess Royal is an incredibly special model, really, because a little bit like Backman with the J72, the Princess was their first ever model. I mean, obviously, there were some Hornby Dublo locos from many, many years ago, but they were effectively from a different company. The Princess was the first that Rovex built all the way back in 1955, and there have been loads and loads of Hornby Princess models since then. I think 1984 was the next one. They retooled it and added a bit more detail and improved the mechanism and such. And then in 2003, there was an all new retool. I think it might have just been an upgrade, but then it became Loco Drive again and it was super detailed and whatnot. And here we have version four, what I think is Princess Royal version 4.0, which should obviously be the best, I'm hoping. Now, this was incredibly expensive. I bought this from Hattons for £171. The RRP is £189.99, so we're talking an incredible amount of money. If you want to check these out, I have an affiliate link down in the description. But yeah, astonishing stuff. Uh, the previous model, uh, the previous Princess, was released only 17 years ago, so it's not really been long since this had a retool. But knowing Hornby, this is going to be impressive. So let's get this out and find out what it's like. I cannot wait. All right, so the first thing I've just got to talk about is the sheer weight of this box. It weighs an incredible amount. It's noticeably very heavy. And in fact, even when it was in its bigger box, you know, that it was shipped in, it was really noticeably heavy. In fact, when the postman handed it over, I didn't think it was the princess because it was so heavy. The other thing is, I have not even pulled the sleeve off this box yet, like I said, I've only just got it, so this really will be my first look. But obviously, for an awful lot of money, £171 is a lot of money, of course. Very, very high expectations, so I'm looking forward to getting this open to see inside. Before I do, though, let me just show you the end of the box. You can see the product code, which is R3709. Mine is the LMS Princess Royal Class Princess Elizabeth, and it's number 6201. But there are quite a lot of versions of this, quite a lot of different versions. Uh, I think a couple of them are out now, but there's also a few others that have been announced too. Uh, quite a lot of nice liveries too. Okay, on the back, if I show you the back of the box, you can see this was classified as a 7P, so a reasonably powerful locomotive, very powerful, in fact, for the 1930s. In the centre there, we have a brief history. Feel free to pause that and read it if you like. And then on the end of the box, we've got a diagram there, which is dated 2018, which I don't think is a very long time ago, really. If we think it's taken two years to go from a drawing to a product, yeah, that's actually really quite impressive, isn't it? Anyway... Shall we do this then? Let's take this sleeve off and see what's inside. I mean, I know what's going to be inside. I hope. I hope there aren't going to be any sort of crazy surprises. But let's see what it's like. Ooh, there it is. Wow. So yeah, I've been thinking a lot about this because the previous Princess, which I think was released in 2003 anyway, was really, really good. The performance was amazing. The detail was amazing. It's hard to imagine how this could possibly improve on it, but I'm guessing we're going to find out. So let's take out the block. Oh my God. This is, you know, as the boxes are getting smaller, as I'm shelling off the outer layers, the weight of this is getting even more impressive. This is crazy stuff. I'm even wondering whether there's going to be some die cast on this. I'm hoping for the money there will be. I mean, the running board ought to be, really, because even the Backman Pacifics of this sort of price uh, have running boards. And you know what I think about Backman's value for money. <laughs> anyway, it's not about Backman. Here we go. The operating and maintenance instructions for the Princess Royal class. Let's take a look, because it might show us a bit about the mechanism. Uh, well, it doesn't really. Anyway, lubrication, yeah, that's pretty box standard, isn't it? Bit of lubrication. Fitting accessories, yep, that's fine. It's good that it shows you that. Assembly, well, disassembly, really. Connecting the loco and tender. Body removal, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm glad that there's so many screws holding the body on. There's at least two there. 
yeah, pretty sturdy stuff and a bit about close coupling and on the back, brake rods. Okay, so yeah, pretty standard stuff. Uh, let's start getting this out then. Uh, I can see that there is a detail pack. Right. Yeah, detail pack then. Let's grab hold of that and take a look. So inside here, well, most noticeably, we have a, a set of uh, pony truck wheels. Um, these have flanges on them, so I assume the one fitted to the model won't have flanges, which will allow it to negotiate tighter radius curves. We've got cylinder drain cocks, we've got brake rigging, uh, and then coupling for the front, presumably, and a couple of steps. All in all, not an awful lot uh, to fit yourself, which means most of the details factory fitted, which is a big thumbs up. And it's really nice to have the more realistic pony wheels as well. Um, so if you want to fit those, you can do. Does that mean that the, the pony is not articulated? Maybe. That, mm, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it looks. Right, let's do this. Let's get this one out. I cannot explain how long I have wondered what this one is going to be like. Highly anticipated, and there it is. I tell you what, there's a great finish on this. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful finish. Fantastic already. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is heavy. My God. Okay, there it is. Wow. And I tell you what, I've not had a chance to look at this yet, of course, but it's immediately obvious that this is not the princess that I'm used to from 2003. Just holding it in the hands, it's incredibly different. Wow. So yeah, this thing weighs a ton. Has it got any die cast? I'm just touching it against my lip, which I know is strange. Uh, no, unfortunately not. It seems that the running plate and the body are just plastic. However, I don't think we can complain about the weight. I will weight this so that you can know exactly how much this weighs. But the weight, I can guarantee you, is not going to be a problem. It weighs an incredible amount. So there it is, the Princess Royal, looking fantastic so far. I really can't wait to see more of this. First of all, though, here is a little bit of history on the class. Introduced in 1933 to the design of William Stanier, the Princess Royal would be his first class of four-cylinder Pacifics. The first two engines, uh, Princess Royal and then this one, Princess Elizabeth, were initially quite disappointing and as a result Stanier fitted them with new boilers containing 32 superheater tubes rather than just 16 and this quickly rectified the issues and the engines became extremely successful passenger locos over that time. And 11 more examples were constructed to that new design in a second batch. This example then, Princess Elizabeth, was built in 1933 at Crew Works and it was the second of the first two ever built. She was withdrawn in 1962 but very fortunately was preserved and of 13 produced in total, only two survive in preservation. Alright, so there is number 6201, Princess Elizabeth, up close and personal for you and I'm sure you'll agree this thing is absolutely beautiful and it really is. I mean, just look at that. Fantastic. I have to say though, and I don't want to say it, but I've got to in order to be honest, given that the RRP of this model is £189.99, I think there are a few areas where the quality of the model isn't really up to scratch. First of all, as I've already said, the fact that the body is all plastic. Now, it's not an issue with the weight, I've got to say that. This is incredibly heavy. I've weighed this in at 520 grams. That's a crazy amount of weight. It's nearly 60 grams more than the previous Princess. So weight isn't a problem at all. It's more just value for money thing. Obviously, a die-cast running board or something like that would have been a great justification for the massive price tag. And it's also a bit of a quality thing. Holding a model in your hands and feeling the cold of the metal against your fingers really does an awful lot for me, at least, as far as the enjoyment goes. But either way, yeah, I think the lack of die cast could probably be excused, as I say, because it's very heavy. What can't really be excused, though, and I'm sorry to point this out, is the glue marks. We have the glue monster striking again. Uh, the main issue is with this pipe along the side of the boiler. There are two areas on there where you can clearly see the glue. And also during assembly, some of that glue has been spilt onto the boiler as well. And you can quite clearly see some clouding or frosting going on with that, which is a bit of a shame. Now, I don't know whether I'm just being too picky. To my mind, that's not acceptable for a model that costs £190 RRP or even £171, which is I paid. It's not a major issue. And if this cost £120, I don't think I'd, well, I'd mention it, but it wouldn't be a huge problem. But with a price like that, 
everything has to be 110%, doesn't it? A couple of these separately fitted details are a little bit on the dodgy side as well. I mean, uh, these are all very minor, but they, they do add up to make a bit of an impression. These sprung buffers, for example, it's great that we've got sprung buffers, but they don't spring back out again. They get stuck, as you can see, uh, which, yeah, like I say, it's not a massive problem. But when you notice these things, you do just think, hmm, that's not so great. Same with the top of the cab, these air intake doors are very, very loose. I mean, it's a great feature, it's amazing that those actually open, but they're so, so loose to the point where they don't look very good because they, they don't sit flat. <laughs> and I'm amazed that they haven't actually come off. Yeah, incredibly, incredibly loose. So there are just one or two tiny, tiny niggles. Obviously, they're not a huge deal, but added together, maybe they add up to something, I don't know. However, the level of detail is astonishing on this, and noticeably so. It's an incredible improvement over the previous sort of 2003, early 2000s era model. So let's take a look at some of this. We'll start with the paintwork, which is top notch, I'm pleased to say. You have the small amount of yellow lining on the boiler, which is just perfectly done. The splashes are beautifully lined. The center splasher has the Princess Elizabeth nameplate, which is etched. That is a metal part, which is beautiful. And then the front splasher there has a very, very tiny builder's plate fitted onto it, which is legible and very impressive. And also the cylinders are lined as well, beautifully painted, in fact, very, very well done. A lot of the details on this Loco are separately fitted, whereas they were just a part of the moulding on previous versions. As you note, the pipe on the side is separately fitted, and you can tell that because of all the glue marks on it. <clears throat> but that was just moulded on previous models, so there's some good and some bad in that. Look at all these little intricate pieces of pipe work just in front of the cab there. Very impressive to see. We've got the separately fitted reverser rod too, which is made of metal. Great to see. And there's some of these tiny little components towards the smoke box on the running plate really really impressive some of them separately painted you can see some of those uh, little pipes there all painted gold beautiful to see in front of the cab we have the separately fitted whistle there which appears to be made of plastic but we do have metal safety valves and just look at the way those shine compared with the whistle uh, yeah you can't beat metal can you you really really can't Let's have a look at the rest of the cab then. So on the side of the cab, we have the 7P classification and the running number all beautifully applied and lined as well. Of course, I should say a beautiful lining around the cab and the running plate. Underneath the cab, we have some of this pipe work, uh, which is clearly just painted plastic. Like I say, it doesn't have the same shine that the safety valves have, but uh, it's nice that that is painted. We also have realistic looking glazed windows, which is fantastic. The cab doors are incredibly convincing on this. I really love the way that those have been posed. They're not reposable or anything like that, but I think the position that those are in out of the box looks fantastic. And of course, the cab detail is very impressive as well. That is a top-notch cab, really, uh, with all the painted gauges as well. It really does look very good. The smoke box area is very impressive. As you can see, lots of riveted detail going on there. And there's these infinitesimally small bits of wiring here, or they could be pipe work, I'm not too sure, but they're very, very tiny. The front of the smoke box door is very impressive as well. You have the separately fitted lamp brackets, you have separately fitted handrails, and for the first time, I think, on a Hornby Princess, you have a fully separately fitted smoke box dart, which of course is a very realistic feature, and the painted detail on the smoke box is fantastic as always. The running plate below there is noticeably very well detailed. For the first time, we've got an awful lot of riveted detail going on with that. You can clearly see see the ends of the internal cylinders because of course this is a four cylinder Pacific uh, so those have been nicely molded and as you can see the front buffer beam looks very realistic as well with the vacuum pipe pre-fitted and as I said sticky but yes sprung buffers. The wheel set is also a huge improvement over previous Princess models, <laughs> tongue twister. Uh, yep, yeah, no axles visible, which is fantastic. The previous models did have visible axles. This looks way more realistic as a result of that. And of course, the coupling rods and the valve gear and such all look top notch as well. And I, I can't really wait to see those running. That's going to be fantastic. So hopefully that is a good overview of the details. I should probably show you the underframe because there's quite a lot of detail going on with that. I'm not sure if that's cast. It could be. On the old versions, that area there was part of the chassis, I believe. Or was it? No, perhaps it wasn't. I don't know. We'll find out. I'll do a comparison one day. Would you like to see that? Let me know in the top corner. Uh, but maybe, maybe I'll try that.
One major detail that isn't very accurate, and I know it's going to annoy some people, not me, but it does annoy some people, and that is of course the rear pony truck here, which is not articulated, it doesn't move, it's just fixed. Uh, and I know people had issues with that when Hornby did that with their A4s. Unfortunately, they've done the same with this. Now, I assume that's a compromise. I suppose if they were going to make that move, it would end up looking less realistic. I assume that's been done for practical reasons, but it's worth mentioning. In fact, you've got to mention it, haven't you? The tender looks absolutely fantastic, and now's probably a good time just to talk about the finish of the bodywork. And I don't really mean the printed detail either. I mean literally the finish of the plastic bodywork. It's just got almost a sort of satin finish to it. It's not matte, it's not gloss, it just looks fantastic. Quite realistic, really. Obviously, the real things were a bit more glossy, but it looks good, I must say, and obviously no glue marks or anything on the tender, so that has to be applauded as well. The decoration is superb as well. You've got the LMS logo looking really bright and crisp there, very, very good. And the underframe just looks amazing on these tenders. I've always thought so, and on this latest release, it's no different. The lining looks fantastic, the molded detail, the suspension springs all look fantastic, which is really good to see. The coal load in top is nice and fine, much more realistic uh, than we've seen in the past with Hornby's Princess models, and it is now removable too. So if you wanted to get rid of it, I mean, I don't, I don't expect you would really because it, it looks good, but if you wanted to get rid of it and replace it with crushed coal, you absolutely could do. Around the back, there is just something about this that looks so realistic. I think it's just the rivers. They just look better than rivets on other models. I don't know whether that's because of their size or what, but just, I don't know, is it me? Or is that really, really impressive looking? Fantastic. You've got all sorts of printed details there relating to, well, I guess one of them's a builder's plate, capacity of the tender, that sort of thing. And then another nicely detailed buffer beam. Are the buffers a bit better on the tender? Yeah, the buffers spring a little bit better on the tender. They're a more conventional size, aren't they? And then, of course, we do have the tension lock NEM coupling pre-fitted, which is good, and there seems to be a little bit of uh, pivoting on that, which is great. So, yeah, the level of detail is astonishing. One or two minor quality problems, but they are only very minor. They wouldn't really be a big deal on cheaper models, but obviously this is not a cheap model, so you've got to talk about them. Do they detract from the model on the whole? No, I don't think so. Things like the sprung buffers being a bit sticky and uh, the cab doors on top, yeah, they're not a big deal. You can just position them as you like and then they're not going to ruin the performance. Glue marks, nah, that's a little bit less forgivable, but they're not terrible. They're not absolutely everywhere. So overall, this has to be a big thumbs up. I really do like this. But the big question then is how does this perform? Because previous princesses, while they were less detailed, they were always excellent performers, or at least the early 2000 ones were. So it's going to be fascinating to see how this one performs. So let's give that a go. So there it is then, the brand new Princess Royal down onto the track. And I'm going to say it again, the finish on this just looks amazing, doesn't it? I really hope that comes across on camera. Now, when it comes to the mechanism, I'm about to be incredibly positive, so I'm really hoping this is not going to come back to bite me when I actually try it. But in my opinion, the mechanisms in Hornby Locos are some of the best in the industry, and this is definitely no exception. So as you can see, we have a proper set of metal bearings on the wheel set there, really, really good. It's not too over-oiled, there's a bit of oil there, but not too much. The base piece is really intuitive as well. It's a single piece, the pickups are all built into it. It's really, really good. Inside we've got this big chunky motor and a massive flywheel which is fantastic. The motor mountings aren't very good, the motor's not very secure in there as you can see, but that isn't a massive problem because the motor isn't driving the gear set directly. And then you have this comically oversized LED for the firebox glow. Um, and that's not actually pointing towards the firebox, it's pointing down. Obviously LEDs like that tend to be directional, but then again, you don't want the full force of an LED shining through the firebox there. You don't want it to blind the crew, do you? So yeah, it's all looking really, really good. As I say, that motor looks great. The flywheel is really good to see. So let's give this a little bit of a test then and see how this goes. We have full pickups on the driving wheels and full tender pickups as well. So it really is impressive stuff. Okay, I'm going to set this forwards and we're going to give it its first ever test. As always, this has not yet been run in. This is just the performance straight out of the box. Here we go. Turning it up really gently. Oh, there we go. It started to move. <laughs> Ooh, that was a growl. Did you hear that? Let's go back. There we go. So straight away, this seems to be quite smooth. 
Uh, as was the case with the coronation, I can hear the tender singing as it goes along in reverse, funnily enough. Yeah, that's a high-pitched whine, so we could do with some uh, lubrication on there. In forwards, we do have a bit of a growl. Yeah, it doesn't sound dreadfully happy, does that? I hope that isn't a problem. I hope there's not an issue with the way the motor's mounted. No, I don't think so. It's just, yeah, it's got a bit of a funny noise to it. Anyway, the firebox glow is very, very noticeable. I'll get this running on the rolling road in a second and uh, get a shot of that for you, but it's very good, very bright, and it is flickering as well. I know Backman didn't manage that with their firebox glow on DC, so that's quite impressive. Right, it's had a bit of charging forwards and back now, so let's try a little bit of another slow speed test. Let's get it into the middle. There we go. Right, let's try that again, shall we? It's very heavy, so it will be impressive if it can do this. Oh yeah, that's really quite good, isn't it? To say that's not been run in yet, that is really good. Oh yes. Fantastic, yeah. I just don't like that grumbling noise. I hope that isn't indicating a problem. But the slow speed, fantastic. And apart from the noise, it does seem to be perfectly smooth, which is great. So as you can see, the performance here is absolutely awesome. It really is. I also think I've managed to fix that nasty noise as well. I was thinking about that dodgy motor mounting. Uh, so I took it apart again, reseated the motor, and I've not heard the noise since I did that. So I reckon that is a thumbs up. So as you can see, yeah, a fantastic runner. I haven't tested the pulling power or anything like that. I'm gonna let it run in, and then we'll come back in a few minutes and I'll do some more testing with it. But uh, for now, very, very impressed by the performance. It seems like a wonderful, wonderful runner. And so it should be, because of course it does have a fantastic mechanism. Okay, we are back folks. And I think that pretty much settles it, yeah. The performance is incredible. In fact, the flywheel's so good that I'm having trouble getting this to stop <laughs> in the center of the shot. Yeah, it's just run for about an hour solidly forwards and then back, no problems whatsoever. No derailments, absolutely perfect. Like I said, the noise has gone now uh, since I reseated the motor. Yes, the motor mountings aren't the best, but I am going to give them the benefit of the doubt there because it does seem to work fine. So the crawl it did before I ran it in was incredibly impressive, but is it any different now? Let's see. Oops. Yeah, I'm a bit too trigger happy on this, aren't I? I need to take it easy. There we are. If you just get it at the right spot, you can see the crawl is incredibly good. <laughs> like unbelievably good. Unnecessarily good, I would say, for a loco of this size. But the fact that it can do such a good crawl just proves what a brilliant mechanism is inside here. And so as far as the performance is concerned, you do get what you pay for, don't you? You'd expect perfection for the price, and at least where the running qualities are concerned, that's exactly what you get. Look at that. Core. Cool. There we are. That's about as slow as it'll go, I reckon. Good. Blimey. That's very, very good. Right, so the pulling force is very, very good as well. Let me just grab my sheet. So I measured the pulling force to be 0.64 newtons, which is very, very high. There are some diesels I've got which uh, can't pull as well as that. Uh, that works out at roughly 37 coaches on straight and level track, which is obviously rather high for even for a loco of this size, really. Anyway, given that then, I have set up eight LMS coaches. I'm sure that won't be a problem for her whatsoever, but uh, we'll get coupled up to them now and uh, just verify that it can do that. Okay, here we go. Nice steady start. Oh yes. Man, I'm struggling to get over how much of a good runner this one is. It really is that good. Okay. There we are. Well, it seems able to push the coaches back. Obviously the speed dropped dramatically once it had all that weight. Has it coupled correctly? Yes, it does seem to have done right. Let's see what we can do then. Let's try a nice gentle start and see how she manages these coaches. Oh yes, didn't see any slipping of the wheels at all there. Yeah, this is a very, very powerful model. Very impressive. I'm glad. I was dreading it being really light. It's definitely not. All right, so on the other lines, I thought I would show some of Hornby's previous Princess models, because this is something that interests me, you know, the, the same model, well, the same prototype. Different models, very interesting. So here's the previous release from the early 2000s, I'm saying 2003. 
Um, I could have got the date wrong, but it's around there. It's within a couple of years. If you look up close, you can see that the level of detail on this is considerably less than on the new version. Uh, it's still very good, don't get me wrong, but the new version is a big improvement. So if you care about detail, yes, the latest 2020 model is definitely one to go for. Let's get this out of the way. Still a good runner though, very good performer. And then on the inside line, I have uh, ooh, quite, a, quite an old gem, this one. So this is, it's not the 1950 release, but it's the same sort of thing. It's the same bodywork at least, slightly updated chassis. Um, but uh, yeah, I love this one. Uh, it's obviously a far, far cry from the latest version, as you can just tell. Um, but I did spend an awful lot of time on this one, sort of restoring it, getting it to run well. And it's not relevant, but I will just show you how it can crawl. It doesn't crawl as well as the new one, of course, but it, it is a good crawler. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> For a model of its age, it's quite unusual to see them crawl that well. <laughs> Bit jerky though. It's only a three pole motor. It's not bad, very smooth. So there we go. Let's have a good running session then and see how the new Loco is managing those eight coaches. So unlike the streamlined Coronation, I do say that this was a good candidate for a retool. Um, looking at the two side by side, which might be something I'll do properly in a video one day, you can see how much of an improvement this loco is, uh, particularly in just the finish. I mean, yes, the detail, but the way the light reflects off the bodywork is not something I've really seen before, but it just invokes incredible realism, which I'm really impressed by. I can't even put my finger on what it is, but there's something about it that looks wonderful. It really does. So here are some of my ratings then for the fantastic new Hornby Princess. I think the level of detail has to be a 5 out of 5. There are quite a lot of nice details on there, particularly the firebox glow effects, the sprung buffers, the fantastic finish. Yeah, I do think the level of detail is fantastic and it's incredible to see how much of an improvement this is on a model that was only 17 years old. That's the age of the previous tooling. So really, really, really good. The performance similarly has to be a five star, given the noises a benefit of the doubt because they do seem to be better now. Incredible slow speed, very, very, very smooth, very powerful. Can't fault it, the performance is top notch. The pulling power is incredible as well, 37 coaches, even for a large Pacific like this, is very, very impressive. The mechanism is wonderful as well, it just ticks all of the boxes as Hornby models so often do. It's got proper bearings, all wheel pickup, or most wheel pickup, not the bogey and truck wheels, but apart from that, lots and lots of wheels pick up. Lovely little five pole motor inside there, nice chunky flywheel. In my opinion, it really doesn't get much better than this as far as the mechanism is concerned. Now the quality, I've had to knock off a couple of stars. The actual build quality is pretty good, it must be said. However, there were those glue marks which really detracted from me a little bit. And of course, most of the model, at least where the bodywork is concerned, is made of plastic. For the price, I think a little bit more metal work wouldn't have been unreasonable. It's not a huge problem. On the plus side, there is a lot of weight to the model and it is relatively sturdy, especially given the amount of detail on this. So yeah, the quality is not terrible, not amazing. Similarly, value for money, obviously £189.99 as the RRP left absolutely no room for any shoddiness whatsoever. Unfortunately, there were one or two issues with the model, which meant that that price to me was a little bit unreasonable. I paid £171, as I said, from Hattons, which is okay. Okay, I would say it's still an awful lot of money though, so only three star there. However, to a degree, you do get what you pay for, so I will acknowledge that. Overall then, that is 8.48 out of 10. I think that might be the best score of the year so far, is it? Yes, there we go, into the logbook. It is indeed first, just above the Backman E1, and I'm, I will say that's deserved. It's a, a wonderful model, without a doubt. So there's no doubt about it, this one is a pleasure to run, it's a beautiful looking model. Overall, I do think that's true, and it runs like a dream. Fantastic stuff. So well done Hornby, I reckon they definitely got it right this time. 
And just like every time Hornby get it right, they really do. Yeah. In fact, if you could get one without the gluey mess on it, I would say this would be very near perfect, if not for the high price. But high prices are okay when you get what you pay for, so perhaps even that's not really relevant. So there you have it then folks, that is my review of the Hornby Princess Royal and I've thoroughly enjoyed that, it's a beauty in every sense of the word. Let me know how you would have rated this one, for me this gets a solid 4 star, if not for the quality issues as I said this would probably be getting a 5, but let me know what you think. For now though, thanks for watching, thanks for your company and I will see you very soon on the next one. Cheers everybody.